Jesus. God, look on those who will be listening online, God. We're praying for them, God. Hallelujah. There may be some that are sick. There may be some who are going through difficult situations. There may be some who are dealing with mourning, God. Hallelujah. But God, you know every situation. You know every circumstance. Look on them now, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We pray your blessings over them, God. We speak peace into the homes, Lord. Peace into the lives, Lord, of all those who will be listening on tonight, God. Hallelujah. We bind up doubt in the name of Jesus as we build up our faith in you, God. God, we're looking to you, God. Hallelujah. To build us up, oh God. Hallelujah. Help us to do what it takes, God, to build up our faith in you, God. In the name of Jesus, oh God, look on me tonight, God, as we come forth, Lord. Give us clarity of thought, God. Clarity of speech, God. God, we are an instrument for you, God. And we just believe you, God. We know that you're going to do some awesome things. We know that you're going to speak some awesome things. And we receive it now, God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes to your will, oh God. Hallelujah. Have your way, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. Holy Spirit, have your way tonight. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Be in this place, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Refill us tonight. Shower down on us with your anointing power. Hallelujah. Fall fresh on us tonight, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we give you glory. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, God, we magnify you. We thank you, God. You're wor wonderful. You're worthy of our praise. You're worthy, God. You're worthy, God. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. God, we thank you for those who are even here right now, God. We pray, God, hallelujah, those who are at the altar. Some, hallelujah, as we are in this time, God, we pray that you would just touch their bodies, Lord. Strengthen, Lord. Heal, Lord. Encourage tonight. In the name of Jesus, revive us again, O oh God. Send a revival in this house. In the name of Jesus, send a revival in our ministries, God. In the name of Jesus, O oh God, we look to you for our help coming from you, Lord. No other help we know, God. Hallelujah. But Jesus, we know that you're real. We know, God, that you are real. We know that you exist. Hallelujah. You are the one true God. You are the eternal God. You are Elohim. You're the one God in three persons. And we recognize you. We lift you up as the Trinity. Hallelujah. You exist, oh God. And because we know that you exist, God, we can put our faith in you. We can put our confidence in you. We can trust you. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, you are real in our life. Uh, and we thank you tonight, God. We come into this house. Uh, we're ready to lift you up. We're ready to praise you. Uh, we're ready to magnify you. Uh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Uh, hey, 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 hey. Hold on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No, 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 no. Yay. Glory. Now, God, we praise you. And we get ready to go into our teaching, God. We pray that you will look on our discipleship team, God, and we pray for them, Lord, each of the members, God. We lift them up to you. We pray for our pastor and our co-pastor that you would strengthen them, God, encourage them, God, lift them up in the name of Jesus. And God, we just be careful to give you the glory and the honor that is due your name in Jesus' name. Come on, everybody say thank God. Come on, everybody say thank God. Bless his name. Amen. <clears throat> Jesus, 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 what a wonder you are. Jesus, 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 what a wonder you are. Jesus, 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 Jesus. What a wonder you are, oh Jesus, what a wonder you are. 
Jesus, 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 what a wonder you are. Jesus, 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 what a wonder you are. <clears throat> Jesus, 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 what a wonder you are. Oh, Jesus, what a wonder you are. Savior, oh, Savior, 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 what a wonder you are. Savior, 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 what a wonder you are. Savior, Savior, what a wonder you are. Oh, Jesus, what a wonder you are. Come on, let's call him Master. Hallelujah. Master, 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 what a wonder you are. Master, 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 what a wonder you are. Master, 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 what a wonder you are. Oh, Jesus, what a wonder you are. Oh, Jesus, what a wonder. more time, hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, what a wonder you are. Amen. We thank the Lord for being in this house one more time. Amen. We praise God for being in the house. Amen. We want to say thank you, amen, to God for how he has blessed us to be in this house one more time. Amen. We come in here to learn of the Lord. Amen. Welcome to Joy of Life Ministries. Amen. I believe we are on and we are coming. Amen. And we're talking about building your faith. Amen. We've been in this series and God has blessed us. Amen. Where we've talked about um, knowing God and believing that God is. Amen. We must first believe that he is. Amen. We must first believe that he exists. Amen. Before we can even go any further than that. We have to believe that God exists. Amen. He is the one true God. Amen. He is the one God. Amen. In three persons uh, or three persons in one God. Amen. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we thank God. Amen. Because we believe that not only does he exist, we know who he is. Amen. But God has emotions. God has an intellect. God is uh, an intelligent God. The Bible lets us know that he is omniscient. Amen. That means he has all the knowledge. Amen. Amen. You and I may have a little bit of knowledge. Amen. But God has all knowledge. Amen. And not only does he have all knowledge, but he is omnipotent. Amen. He is all powerful. Amen. Amen. And the only power you and I might have would be that that he gives us. Amen. But God is omnipotent. He is omnipresent and he is all knowing. So we are so glad tonight. Amen. We are so excited about what God is doing in our lives. Amen. And the way that he's leading our bishop. Amen. As we go into building our faith. Amen. I already did the review there. Amen. We talked about the uh, all of the the uh, components or the uh, we did a quick review of all of the sessions, amen, up to this point. Amen. If y'all are standing up, y'all can sit down. I don't know. <laughs> it sounds like somebody's like right next to me. So, <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> but we're excited, amen. Uh, we talked about, again, who God is, amen, believing that he is. We talked about the kind of God he is, amen. We talked about... 
how many gods there are. And tonight, somebody say tonight. Amen. Amen. We are going to talk about how can you know God? Amen. How can you know God? Amen. We thank God, amen, to, uh, for our media team, amen, and they have our, if you're, those of you who are online, you can see, amen, the PowerPoints will be up there, and uh, if you need any of the uh, PowerPoints, any of the materials, you can see the, uh, um, the contact information where we need to send that, amen, and you'll see that again at the end of the PowerPoint slide. Amen. But we want to make sure that you know where to get the materials. Amen. Amen. So we are certainly glad. Amen. Uh, again, we're talking tonight about how can you know, how can you know God? Amen. Um, in our lesson tonight, uh, in your books, amen, it started off and it talked a lot about relationships. Amen. And that is a big portion and that will be pretty much the premise from where we will talk tonight, amen, and we're going to go through that. Uh, we have specific points, amen, that we'll go through. We'll talk about the specific uh, elements, amen, of a healthy relationship, amen. Somebody say healthy relationship. We're not just talking about any old kind of relationship, amen. We're, we're talking about a healthy relationship, Amen. And uh, in your book, amen, it talks about relationships. I believe there's um, kind of uses, a, I can't think of her name, but, you know, what type of relationship she has with her parents. Amen. And some of the elements that are involved. And so in order for us to have a healthy relationship between us and the father, amen, or between us and God, there are elements that the lesson brings out uh, in your books. Amen that are necessary for there to be a healthy relationship. Amen. These elements, amen, as you see, amen, number one, uh, we talked about conversion. Amen. Conversion, basically, it is turning away from something and turning to something else. Amen. It is turning away from sin, amen, and turning to God. Amen. It's turning from unrighteousness, amen, and turning to God or turning to righteousness. Amen. Amen. So we don't just turn all the way around. Amen. But if we, and they have me on, if we're turning from one thing, from sin, then we turn, amen, to something else. Amen. We turn away from sin. Amen. And we turn to God. Amen. Amen. We turn from unrighteousness or unrighteous acts, amen, and we turn to righteousness. Somebody say conversion. Conversion is one of the elements of a, a healthy relationship between us and God. Amen. We'll talk a little bit more about conversion, amen, when we, as we go. But the, other, the next one is, and you'll see there, it is, hallelujah, uh, compassion. Compassion meaning con in the in the in the sit in the uh, context of Amen. When we talk about compassion, Amen, we're talking about Amen. God had compassion upon man, <laughs> Amen. In other words, uh, we, we you know there was a concern for one another, Amen. So when we talk about compassion in a relationship, Amen, it's not just something where you feel sympathetic towards somebody. This is not just something where you just feel bad or feel sorry for someone, but this is where you see a need, amen, and you do something to help that person, amen. When we talk about compassion, God saw a need that we could not help ourselves, amen, and he did something about it, amen, and we show our concern to God, amen, by being obedient to his word. Amen. So we'll get deeper into that. I'm just talking about the elements right now. Amen. Somebody say the elements of a healthy relationship. Yes. Hallelujah. Con uh, conversion. Compassion. And then the last element that comes out in your lesson, amen, is that of, uh -oh. amen, is uh, communication. Amen. Communication uh, we all know if you've ever been in any type of relationship, you know communication, it, ha it is essential for a healthy relationship. 
Amen. Even if you communicate what you like, you communicate what you don't like. It, you still have to have communication in order to have a healthy relationship. Amen. Amen. So we're going to talk about that tonight. And as we go through these elements, you can follow along in your book. I believe in your book, it may be on page 27, those of you who have a book. Amen. And if you don't, amen, again, we, you can follow along on the slides and we'll make that available to you, those of you who reach out. Amen. Amen. All right. So let's go to, let's talk about what we call the components of conversion. Components of conversion. Again, we talked about conversion is we turn away from something, amen, and we turn to something else, amen. But in order for this really to take place, amen, when we talk about conversion, Number one, we need to align our will, align our total, uh, our desires, our thoughts. Everything about us need, has to be aligned with God. Amen. It can't, we don't just turn from, if we try to do it on our own, we'd be turning from unrighteousness to unrighteousness. Amen. Because we can't save ourselves. Amen. We couldn't do anything. And, 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 and so when we align ourselves Amen. With God. Amen. We're aligning our will. Amen. Jesus said, and, and we may see this, but Jesus said, uh, remember when he went to the uh, Gethsemane and he was praying and he said, ne uh, if this cup, if it be possible that this cup pass away. Amen. He, he, he then he turned right around and said, nevertheless, not my will, but what thy will be done. Amen. So it's not about just what we want, amen, but whatever it is that we are seeking, amen, whatever desires we are looking for, whatever uh, successes or whatever goals we've set, it ought to be aligned with the purpose and the plan of God. Amen. If we're going to have a healthy relationship with God, we must align everything that we have everything about our being must align and come into alignment with God the Father. Somebody say uh, conversion. Amen. So we are aligning ourselves. We are um, lining up our will to God. Amen. Amen. Number two, we also had and we talked about, well, we talked about this already, turning away from something to something else or turning away from unrighteousness to uh, righteousness. And so what I'd like to do is go to Ephesians, amen, 2, I believe Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. But God, who is rich in mercy, uh -huh. for his great love wherewith he loved us, mm -hmm. even when we were dead in sin, mm -hmm quickened us together with Christ by grace ye are saved. Listen, it was by grace, amen. It wasn't anything else, amen. We couldn't work our way into this, amen. God had to do it. It was something we didn't deserve, amen. Sin, because of sin, amen. Uh, it wasn't nothing personal. God doesn't hold anything personal against us, but the fact is is that because there is sin in the picture, because God is a righteous God, Amen. Sin will block us uh, from having a, a healthy relationship with him. Amen. And so he said, by grace, even when we couldn't do anything to help ourselves, we were powerless to bring ourselves out of sin. I don't care how much we think we can do. I don't care how good we think we are. Amen. Many times people will say, well, I'm not a bad person. Amen. I don't do anything wrong. I don't steal. I don't kill. No, I don't hurt nobody. Amen. I want to see good for everybody. Amen. But if we have not given ourselves to Christ, if we have not accepted Jesus Christ as our Savior, amen, we are still living in sin. Yes. Hallelujah. The Bible in Isaiah, and this is not in your PowerPoint, but Isaiah 64 and 6, I believe, says that our righteousness are as filthy rags. Yes. Amen. So there's nothing that you or I can do, amen, to 
clean ourselves up. Amen. God, it took God, it took the blood of Jesus to wash us clean. Amen. I heard David say, create in me a clean heart and renew a what? Right, right spirit. spirit within me. Amen. So it, it took the blood of the lamb. In the Old Testament, y'all know the it, it was the blood of the lambs, amen, that they, they had to do for atonement, amen. But then when Jesus came, he took the place of those bulls and the goats, amen. And he is, became the lamb, amen, that was slain for the sins of the world, amen. He became the lamb that was slain for your sins and for my sins, amen. And, and even those who are on their way, there are some, amen, when I think about it, how Think about how powerful the blood of God, the blood of Jesus is, is that, amen, the Bible says we are shaping in iniquity, amen, we were born into sin, but there are some who are not even born yet, but when they come into this world, amen, once they get to that place where they can repent, that blood, amen, will wash them white as snow, amen, amen, I kind of digressed there, but I got excited about the blood, amen, so we turn away from sin and turn to God. Amen. This is one of the healthy the um, uh, elements or, or components of conversion. Really and truly, amen, we, uh, because of sin, amen, uh, we really uh, could have, uh, should have been dead. Amen. Amen. But God had compassion. <laughs> amen. He knew that we needed help. Amen. He knew that we could not save ourselves. Let's go to Matthew 26 and 39. I want to Amen. And he went a little further and fell on his face uh -huh. and prayed saying, oh my father if it be possible let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless not as I will but as thou wilt. Amen. We see here that even Jesus Christ, amen, in the, the human, God in the human form, he was aligning his will with that of the Father. Amen. And Jesus always sought, when he was on his earthly ministry, he always made sure that he sought after the will of the Father. Everything that he did was in alignment with God the Father. Amen. And so that's the same thing we ought to do. Amen. Is we ought to make sure that everything we do is in alignment with God the Father. Let's go to Romans 5 and uh, 6 and 8. Amen. I'm going to ask Romans 5 verses 6 through 8. We're still talking about aligning ourselves. We're talking about conversion and and uh, how'd you get that? When you get that, would you read that? Amen. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet preadventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God but commended God. his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. So look at the power here that, amen, and again, it just goes back and shows here's some biblical support that says and lets us know that we couldn't save ourselves. We were powerless. Amen. You ever been in a situation, uh, you know, I remember growing up as a little boy, there were times and, and I don't, I don't, um, I remember there were times where I'd be sleeping in the middle of the night. Amen. And all of a sudden it just seems like uh, I'd have a dream and and it looked like I couldn't move uh, in that dream. Or it looked like I, you know, you ever been able in a dream and you running in the dream? Listen, and you can only run so fast. I don't care how hard you try. You are running. You are running. You are, and, and if somebody were to see you while you were asleep, they, they'd probably try to wake you up. But in your dream, you try, you try, it just seemed like you can't run fast enough. Hallelujah. Anybody ever been there? <laughs> amen. You are powerless. You are only able to do so much, amen, in that dream, amen. And, uh, and there, have been, there are times in our situation where we may be in situations where there's, there's nothing else that we can do. It is, 
no matter what we do, no matter how hard we try, amen, there's nothing we can do to stop or to save ourselves. Amen. Into that, in that dream, there was nothing that I could do to get away from whatever it was that was chasing me. Amen. I remember even sometimes you, you ever been in a dream and you have a fight with somebody in a dream. And, and no matter how hard you try to punch, you can, it don't seem like you hit them hard enough. Y'all, y'all. <laughs> no matter how, how quick you might be in if you're awake and you're, uh, but in the dream, you can only punch so hard. You could only punch so fast. You could only run so fast. Amen. So what is my point here? My point here is, is this, that there are things, it doesn't matter how good we think we are. Amen. It doesn't matter how good we try to act. Amen. Amen. If we don't acknowledge Jesus Christ, amen, and his death, burial, and the resurrection, amen, if we don't accept him, amen, Paul said in Acts 16 and 31, he said, believe on the name of Jesus Christ, amen, and thou shalt be saved, amen. If we reject Jesus Christ, amen, we are powerless, amen, to save ourselves. Uh, there's nothing that you or I can do to save our own selves. But think about this. Even when we were in our sins, amen, Christ already died, amen, so that we could be saved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Christ already went to the cross, amen, so that you and I could be saved, amen. And so, amen, the Romans or, or the Apostle Paul is saying, amen, even when we were powerless, amen, Jesus, hallelujah, died for our sins, amen. I always often think about in that particular scripture, it talked about perhaps, amen, or the Bible uses the word peradventure, amen, perhaps, amen, would some might die for a good man. Amen. You think about the Secret Service. I often see the president, amen, uh, no matter what president it is, amen, there's always some Secret Service people around them, amen. And I remember as a boy, amen, around, I think when Ronald Reagan, amen, the assassination attempt on his life, amen, I remember the, there was a Secret Serviceman that jumped in front of him and took the bullet, amen. Amen. I believe his last name was Brady. And then we got some legislation out of that. Amen. From that particular act. Amen. But here is somebody. Amen. Who jumped in front of another man. Amen. And only reason why he did it, it was because it was his job. Amen. He may not have spent time with this man. He did not grow up Ronald, with Ronald Reagan. He wasn't with him in at during his boyhood and, and just really getting to know him. But the fact is, is that he had a job to do. Amen. And this man, when somebody goes to attack, amen, uh, the president, amen, his job was to make sure that he protected him at all costs. He saw a need, amen. He saw something happen, and he reacted in a split second, amen. And, and when you think about it, amen, for years after that, think about this. The irony of that is, is that the president got up from that situation, and he was able to go on about his life. He was able to go on and serve out the rest of his term, amen. But this person who gave, amen, jumped in front of him, amen, he had a lifelong uh, situation when it came of being in a wheelchair. Amen. And so here's what I'm saying about this. Uh, we might, some people might die for somebody only because it's their job. Some people may die for somebody because they feel like this is the right thing to do. Amen. I would jump in front of my family members. Amen. Amen. Because I love my family. Amen. And this is what God did for us. Amen. The Bible says that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. St. John 3, 16 and 17. And then it says that God sent his son into the world, hallelujah, not to condemn the world, but what? That the world might, through him, might be saved. Amen. So God saw a need and he acted. Amen. He prepared the way for you and I. Amen. Even before we were born, even before we came into this earth. Amen. He prepared the way before the beginning of time. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Come on, somebody say conversion. <laughs> All right. <sighs> oh, I don't, I'm jumping ahead of myself. So we're going to. All right. Amen. So we're going to talk about compassion, the second element of a healthy relationship. Compassion. Amen. Amen. Uh, so when we talk about. Uh oh. Let me do this. I think I went. Mm. Y'all have compassion on me. <laughs> Amen. I think in in this um this particular slide that we're on, it should be the one um it says compassion and then it says God shows Concern, we show concern for one another? God showed concern for man through his son. Man should show concern for God through All right. his obedience. There we go. There we go. All right. So I talked a li uh, I've, I've talked about how God showed the compassion for us, amen, mm -hmm. through sending his son on the cross, amen, to die for us, amen. But here's something that we really when we talk about building our faith in God, amen, or how can we know God, amen, how can we get to know God, in any relationship, amen, it has to be bilateral, amen, it's not a, a unilateral thing, if, if we want that relationship to be healthy, there has to be things going back and forth, whether that's communication, whether that's compassion, whether, whatever it is, it has to be bilateral, amen, Amen. We couldn't die for God, amen, but we can show our concern for God through our obedience to his word. Yeah. Amen. When God, amen, when we disobey God, amen, uh, and this one I don't have the scripture for it right off, but it, in the scripture it talks about when we go back and we turn back into sin or we go back into the things that we used to do, that we crucify him afresh. Yeah. We crucify him all over again. Amen. Amen. This displeases God. God is displeased. He is not pleased. Amen. Amen. With sin. Amen. God does not, uh, and I'm saying that's an that's a easy term to say. That's, that's not a, uh, but, but God hates sin. Amen. Amen. So when we talk about how we can know God, you know, the song came out years ago and I used to hear it. And I think it was, amen, a group, uh, might have been the whinings, amen. They say, I want to know you in a very real way, amen. Well, in order to know God, amen, we have to first receive him. In order to know God, we have to believe that he exists, amen. We have to know about God. We have to, we can't just say, you know, I can say I know people or I might know of him, amen, you, you, let, me, let me back up. Let me, let me explain this. There are times where you ever been in a situation where somebody asks you, do you know this person? Mm -hmm. and, and you really don't know them. You know of them. Yeah. You may have heard about them. Yeah. You may have even just met them one time. Amen. But you really don't know them. Amen. Because you haven't spent time with them. You haven't talked with them. You haven't had a meeting with them. You haven't done any of those things. So you really can't say, yes, I know this person. We can only say, I know of this person. Yeah. And I think sometimes or many times in life, people will say, I know God, but they really don't know God. They just know of God yeah. because they haven't really taken the time to really get to know him. Amen. They haven't taken the time to find out who he is. They haven't taken the time, amen, even in our lesson as we bring it back here, amen. They haven't taken the time, amen, to uh, obey him. They don't even obey the word that he has, amen. So we have to obey God, amen. We show our concern. We, in your lesson, it talks about that, our concern. We, we, we know that we can't give God anything, <laughs> In other words, materialistic. There's nothing that we have that we can give God because it all belongs to him. Amen. Amen. There's nothing that you or I 
have that God really, if he really wanted it, amen, he couldn't just take it. Right? I oftentimes tease my children a lot of times and, and uh, you know, they'll say, you know, I'll say, you know, you say, you need to clean this room, you know, and well, I, you know, this is my room. Well, uh, I got a problem with that. It's your, it's, it's, you know, I, your name is not on the mortgage, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's really not your room per se, amen, but it's the room that you stay in, that you, I've given you, your mom has given you, amen, uh, uh, a little space that you can occupy until you leave. <laughs> That's just me, right? Right? Uh, and so when we think about it, there's nothing that you or I have that God, again, it doesn't belong to him anyway. So we have to be careful many times when we think about, well, this is my money. This is my house. This is my time. This is my, 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 my. This is my. It is not our. It all belongs to God. And God can swipe it away with the just a uh, word in his mouth. All he has to, just, to do is just speak, and it is gone. Amen. So we have to be careful not to allow ourselves to get so high that we think that um, it, it all belongs to us. Amen. And so here's where we get back to and we talk about this compassion. Here's where we, uh, we can offer up our worship. We offer up our praise. Amen. This is, we're talking about a healthy relationship, right? Amen. God deserves our worship. He deserves our praise. Amen. God has protected us in many issues or many times that we didn't even know about it. Amen. Our, my mind goes back even just on last week. Amen. On the way home, leaving church. Amen. On the way home, or no, I'm sorry, we were on our way to church. Amen. And somebody on one of those riding lawnmowers amen, had earphones in and wasn't watching where he was going and rode out right in front of us, amen, and it, it was the grace of God that allowed Sister J to be able to swerve, amen, into the oncoming traffic and there were no cars coming, amen, he deserves our praise, amen, God protects us, amen, when we don't even know we need protection, he looks over us, he watches over us in our slumber, Amen. When we're asleep, nobody coming in and taking over our home. Yee, hallelujah. So he deserves our worship. Yeah. He deserves our praise. So again, we're talking about compassion. Everybody say, bring it down. Bring it down. You're not preaching. All right. <laughs> hallelujah. Yee. Amen. All right. Amen. Amen. So we're talking, we've talked about the elements. Amen. Conversion. Talk about compassion, which is the elements. Let's look at these. I believe I have some scriptures here. St. John 3, 16. Oh, I already, did I go over that? I went over that. Okay, so let's go to communication. Amen. And the first slide, I believe it should say communication is bilateral. Yes. Is that right? Yes, Amen. God communicates to man, uh -huh, and then man communicates with God. Yes. Amen. It's bilateral. Amen. Even in that relationship, it can't be unilateral if it's going to be a healthy relationship. Yes. Amen. Oftentimes, it usually is unilateral when God is communicating to man, amen, and we ain't listening, huh, amen, but that's not a healthy relationship, I dare to say that that's not even a relationship, amen, because when we don't listen to God or when we don't uh, hear him, amen, there can be no relationship, amen, but even when he speaks to us, we must be able to speak back to him, amen, amen, so communication is bilateral, it is essential, in order for uh, there to be a healthy relationship. God's communication to man. We're going to talk about this general 
uh, revelation. You should be there, right? Everybody with me? General revelation. This is, uh, and God communicates uh, general relations, or I'm sorry, um, general, ap- general facts, if you will, or general information about himself to us. Amen. And on the slide, I believe it should have that he communicates general revelation through nature, through providence, and through conscience. Amen. Romans 18, 21. I'm sorry, Romans 1, 18 through 21. Uh, This first slide, though, those of you who are online, is actually going to be Romans 1, 18 and 19. Amen. And I'm going to ask someone to read that particular verse for us. Romans 1, 18 and 19. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men. Now listen, this is where I said, remember I said God, amen, he, dis, he dislikes, he hates sin. Yes. Amen. Now here, here it is in the scripture, right? His wrath is going to be revealed. Amen. Go ahead. Who uh-huh. hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has showed it unto them. Okay, go ahead. And then go to the next slide to verses 19, I'm sorry, 20 and 21. Let's read that one too. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead so that they are without excuse. Listen, God is, the Bible lets us know that he created the heavens and the earth. Amen? And look at the power that God has that when you look at how everything in earth, in the earth, it all works together in some sort of system. Amen. Um, The Lord blessed me the last couple of weeks, amen, you know, I'm a big, I'm a big fan of uh, sharks and shark week, amen, this is the time of year, I look forward to this time of year, (laughs) amen, my wife and my my kids, they'll tell you, amen, when uh, when we go home from church, amen, I I got my ice cream or I'll get my snacks and I'm going to watch some shark week, (laughs) but it's amazing to me how God has created, if we just took that one animal, amen, it's amazing how God has created them to be able to, amen, within their body, they're able to navigate uh, under the water using electrical uh, and using the solar system, amen, where the, we talk about the solar system and how the moon and the sun and all of that stuff works together and when the sun goes down and all of that, the different seasons, Amen. All of that makes a difference, amen, for the sharks under the earth, amen, because they're using those as a way to, the currents is taking them to where they need to go. And they're following the currents wherever it is they need to go, amen. It's amazing to me how God has equipped them with, amen, every tool that they need underwater now, amen, and they can navigate like you and I, we need GPS, (laughs) amen, they we need, we need GPS, amen. We have to have, amen, something that tells us if we haven't gone there uh, many times or over and over, amen, we have to have GPS to take us, amen. But God has equipped those animals, amen, to where they can just swim and swim, and they swim miles a day. They can swim up to four or five miles a day, Amen. Just going. And and when you and I see them on TV, it looks like they're just kind of just waving on, swimming on through the ocean, right? Minding their own business, looking for food. Amen. But God has equipped them with everything that they need. Amen. And so it's the same thing that even in our lives, our relationship, um, when we talk about communicating with God and how he reveals himself in nature. Amen. If we just look at nature and just look around us, amen, if you look up in the sky, you can say, no, you you know, man, God gives us knowledge to build the skyscraper, amen, but you know what? We didn't create the raw materials that it took to build the the skyscraper, amen. We can procreate, 
We might be able to recreate, but we can't create something out of nothing. God is the only one that can create something out of nothing. Amen. He is the only one that can, like the Bible says, the, can call those things that be not as though they were. Amen. God is the only one that has that kind of power. Who wouldn't want to serve a God like that? Hallelujah. So when we talk about, amen, him revealing himself, the invisible things, there are things in the way our bodies work, the way God has created you and I, amen, if we just look at how we're created, we can understand the power of God. If we look around this world and we look around this earth, go outside and look up in the sky and just begin to wonder how God, God, this got to be you. Amen. Man could not do this. Hallelujah. So he reveals himself through the invisible things. Amen. He reveals his power. Amen. His awesomeness. Amen. And this is why we de he deserves our praise. Yeah. This is why he deserves our worship. Amen. We're talking about a healthy relationship. Yeah. Hallelujah. All right. All right. Nature. Providence. Amen. And then uh, conscience. And then we're just going to skip right on down to the next slide should be uh, I believe Daniel 2. If you're following me, Daniel 2, verses 21. And he changes the times and the seasons. Okay, uh-huh. He removeth kings and setteth up kings. Mm -hmm. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. Look at somebody and just say, can't nobody do it. But God. but God. Amen. He has the providence. So whatever we're struggling with, whatever challenges we're facing, whatever issues we're having, amen, God has the power, amen, to move in my life. He has the power to move in your life. He has the power to change things. Yeah. Amen. I don't care what your president says, amen, God has, amen, the power to change things. The Bible says that the heart of the king is in what? In the hand of the Lord. Yes. Amen. So, amen. Providence. Amen. God has providence over everything. There's nothing that goes on without God's knowledge. There's nothing that takes place without God's permission. Amen. If God says it's not going to happen, it's not going to happen. If he says don't do it, it won't happen. Hallelujah. I don't care what we try to say. I don't care what man tries to make you believe. God is in control of everything. The Bible says that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And what? The world and all they that dwell therein. Amen. It all belongs to God. Amen. Amen. So we're just kind of giving you scriptures here as we're talking through this. Amen. So that those of you who are online, amen, those of you who are here, you can follow along and you have scripture references. All right. I think we got one more, Romans 2 and 14. For when the Gentiles, which had not the law, do by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law are a law unto themselves which show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and their thoughts the meanwhile accusing or else excusing one another. All right, amen, amen. So we thank God, amen, for the scriptures, amen. We're going to move a little bit, kind of pick it up here. It's getting close, amen, and I want to make sure we get to our questions. Amen. So let's talk about, amen, the special God's communication to man. We're still there. And we're talking about special revelation. Somebody say special revelation. Special revelation. This is not just general things that we know about God, but this is when God reveals himself or he tell, um, he reels, I'm sorry, reels. He reveals himself to us through the Bible. Amen. We say it every week. Amen. We believe the Bible to be the what? Only infallible written word of God. Amen. Amen. There's nothing about the word of God that is contradictory. There's nothing about the word of God. Amen. That is 
untrue, but the Bible is true. Amen. It's infallible. Amen. I don't care how people try to, you can't even poke a hole in the Bible. Amen. People try, but it's the only infallible written word of God. So he reveals himself specific or special re revelation through his word. He lets us know all about him. We know about the gospel. We know about the creation. We know about the, uh, um, about the prophets. Amen. Amen. God reveals himself to us through his word. Amen. Amen. Our second bullet, amen, and our, the second point on this, again, is God reveals himself through the living word. Amen. And we know the living word, amen, is who? <laughs> the, let me say that in the mic. We know the living word is Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So he reveals himself. This is the special relationship. It talks about this in our lesson, and as you read through that, you'll You'll get more points about that. I'm, I'm kind of pulling, uh, moving forward here. Um, let's go to the scripture. St. John 1 and 18. No man hath seen God at any time. Uh -huh. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. Mm -hmm. So nobody, we, none of us can say we've seen God at any time, amen, but when Jesus came down on his earthly ministry, he was God manifested in what? The in the flesh, amen, so we, you know, we, we've seen God, but he was manifested in the, he had to send his son so that we could uh, identify with him, so that we had someone that we could see in the flesh, amen, but he was still God, amen, he was still 100% God. Amen. Jesus Christ was 100% God. He was 100% man. Amen. Amen. So no, none of us have seen him, but he's revealed himself to us through the living word. And Jesus revealed and told us all about the Father. Everything that he told us about, amen, it was because, amen, or it was in alignment with, amen, God and what God wanted us to know. Amen. 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 So we have those two points, amen. Uh, the Bible, which is the written word, and then we have uh, the living word, who yes. is Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. And notice I said who and mm -hmm. not what. Amen? Amen. Amen. To Second Timothy 3 and 16, I believe it's. And 17. And 17, yes. All scripture is given by the inspiration of God mm -hmm. and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Amen. Amen. So we thank God again. Again, that's just supporting scriptures for those of you who are listening online. And those are here, amen, we're just supporting what we're saying with scriptures, amen. Um, we're also just going to move quickly here. Um, man's communication with God, and we talked about prayer. Prayer is essential, amen, to a healthy relationship with God, and we know that, right? Yes. Amen, we know that the Bible says that men ought to always pray, Luke 18 and 1. Amen. Um, prayer also provides man with the opportunity of communicating with God. Amen. And so in order for me not to jump ahead of myself, let me go to the scriptures after this. Go to the next slide. Hebrews 4, 17, I believe. 4, 16. Four, did I say 4, 16? Oh, yes. <laughs> let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find help in the time of need. Amen. Now, I wrote down 417, but that was, I had to preach earlier today, and so I was, um, there was another scripture I was using as a reference, so that's where that came from. Okay. <laughs> um, but we can come boldly before the throne of grace. Why? Boldly not meaning that we're all that, amen, or not that, it just has nothing to do about how bad we think we are, right? 
Amen. Being able to come boldly before the throne of grace. Those of you who you remember, you remember in the Old Testament, amen, the only one that can go into the Holy of Holies was who? The high priest, right? Yes. And so the high priest, even he had, when he went in, amen, he had to be careful about how he went in or how he approached or how he went into the Holy of Holies, right? Amen. Because if he didn't have all of his act together, amen, they could be pulling him outside with that rope. <laughs> amen. 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 So, so, so even the high priest had to be careful about how he approached God. And we still have to be careful. We approach God humbly. Amen. But when it says we can approach and come boldly before the throne of grace, this means that we don't have to depend on anyone else to go. Amen. But we can be confident that through Jesus Christ, amen, in Jesus Christ, we can go to the Father, amen, uh, uh, for any issue that we may be having at that time. Whether it's praying, amen, we can go to the throne of grace, amen, through Jesus Christ. Amen. amen. So somebody say, through Jesus Christ. Amen. That's special revelation. Amen. All right. I think. All right. I think that was the last one. So what we want to do, we uh, let's go to um, let's go to the questions. Amen. 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 I'm going to ask Evangelist Richardson. Thank the Lord for you. Amen. Uh, I appreciate you. Now I'm going I'm to switch it over. We're going to make Sister. Evangelist Jefferson work here. Is she downstairs? Oh, see, she didn't even tell me that. All right. Well, Evangelist Richardson, it's, it's me and you. <laughs> amen. I'm sorry. I'm online. I forgot. I'm streaming online. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Amen. I'm sitting here. My, I have a reader here for those of you who, she's not in the mic, but She's helping me to read. So we're going to the questions on the PowerPoint. Question number one. Um, and, and I'm going to ask Evangelist Richardson to read that just for everybody's benefit. Yes. Component of conversion. You must blank that you are a sinner. So what's the word that goes in that blank? Amen. Based on what we talked about, we must blank or you must blank that you are a sinner. Acknowledge. Yep. I mean, we can go with all of those. But the we can go with all of those, amen. But the right one is admit. admit. Amen. But confess, recognize, I think those are all good ones as well, amen. But the correct answer is admit. All right. Um, the second question. You must believe that Christ, no, you must admit that you deserved blank for your sin. Oh, there we go. All right. You must admit that you deserve, and then there's a blank, mm -hmm. for your sins. What should we put there? Okay. Death. Death. Amen. We must admit that we deserve death. Amen. Yeah. Yes, we deserve punishment, but remember, we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. Amen. And the Bible lets us know that when sin, remember in James, amen, that says, James, the first chapter says that, amen, God doesn't tempt man, neither is he tempted of man. Amen. But we're drawn away for, uh, of our own, what? Lust. Yeah. And then when lust is conceived, it bringeth forth what? Sin. sin. And then when sin is accomplished or completed, it bringeth forth what? Death. Death. Amen. So there's your scripture reference for that. Amen. Question number three, Evangelist Richardson. You must believe that Christ blank for your sins. Y'all sure? Yes. <laughs> yes, it's died. I just, amen. Next question. You must believe Jesus, blank, and receive him as your Lord. All right. You must believe Jesus, blank, and receive him as your Lord. Rose. From the dead. What again? 
Rose from the dead. Rose. Amen. The word that goes in there is rose. R-O-S-E. You must believe that Jesus uh, rose. Amen. Amen. And then we looked at scriptures. Amen. Um, uh, well, let me not go there. Let me try to keep moving and get as many questions as I can here. Amen. All right. Next quest- question, Evangelist Richardson. Compassion, God's blank for us. God's blank for us. Compassion. I'm just trying to, let me make sure I'm right where you're at. All right. Yep, God's compassion for us. All right. The next question, we show our love by keeping his commandments. God commands us to love, and then there's a blank. One another. Amen, one another. God commands us to love one another. We're still on communication. It's a question. And then it says, underline, amen, there's a blank. And then it says, revelation. And then there's, under that, there's the three bullets. Mm -hmm. Nature, providence, and conscience. Amen. What goes into that blank? Revelation. There's two types of revelation. You said design. Mm-mm. Close. It's general. Remember in your books, you'll see it. It says general revelation is general things that, general ways that God reveals and talks to us through nature, through providence, and through our conscience. Mm-hmm. Amen? Amen? All right. Vance Vang- Rich, you want to read the next one? We're still on. God's special, more specific revelation teaches us about salvation, the blank word, and the blank word. (laughs) God's more special revelation. Remember, there was two types of revelation, Mm -hmm. and then we can, this will be the last question that we'll do here, but there's two types of revelation, general and special. And remember, under special, there were two ways that God revealed himself to us. What the word, I said the, the the blank word and the we believe the <laughs> let me try to hurry up and help you out. Okay, the living and the, written word. and the written word. Those are the two. Remember I told you the living word and then the written word of God, which is the Bible. Amen. Come on, let's bless the name of the Lord. Come on, how can we know God? Amen. We're just gonna ask, Amen, that you at this time we thank God, Amen. We're going to pray. At this time, amen. Father in heaven, we thank you for this time that we've been able to share and to talk about how we can come to know you better, how we can build our relationship with you, God. We thank you, God, for uh, your word and how you're sharing with us. We pray that you will seal this word in our hearts and help us to grow, Lord, as we begin to or as we try to build our faith in you. We thank you right now. And we pray for those who are online, amen. We pray and just ask that you would just bless them as as they have heard and seal the word in all of our hearts. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. Everybody say, thank God. Amen. So again, we, as we shut it down.